Book 20. Olympian Gods in Arms. So by the beaked ships the Argives formed for battle, arming round you, Achilles Achilles starved for war and faced by the Trojan ranks along the plain's high ground. At the same time, from the peak of rugged ridged Olympus Zeus commanded the mist to call the gods to council. The miss made her rounds, ranging far and wide and summoned all to march to father's halls. Not a single river failed to come, none apart from the ocean stream that holds the earth in place, nor a single nymph who haunts the rustling groves and the river springs and the lush, grassy meadows. All flock to the halls of Zeus who gather storms and found their seats in the colonnades of polished stone Hephaestus built for Father Zeus with all his craft and cunning. And so the powers assemble deep in Zeus's halls. Nor did the god of earthquakes fail to hear the goddess. Surging up from the sea he came to join their ranks, took a seat in their midst and probed Zeus's plans, why now, great king of the lightning, why summon the gods to counsel once again? Still some concern for Troy's and Achaea's armies? Now that battle is set to burst in flames between them. But Zeus who marshals the thunderheads replied, God of the earthquake, well you know my plans, the strategy in my mind, and why I call you here these mortals do concern me, dying as they are. Still, here I stay on Olympus throned aloft, here in my steep mountain cleft, to feast my eyes and delight my heart. The rest of you, down you go, go to Trojans, go to Achaeans. Help either side as the fixed desire drives each god to act. If Achilles fights the Trojans unopposed by us not for a moment will they hold his breakneck force. Even before now they'd shake to see him coming. Now, with his rage inflamed for his friend's death, I fear he'll raise the walls against the will of fate. And with that command Zeus roused incessant battle. Down the immortals launched to the field of action their warring spirits split the gods two ways. Hera went to the mass ships with Pallas Athena, Poseidon who grips the earth, and Hermes god of luck who excels them all at subtle twists and tactics and the god of fire flanked them, seething power, hobbling along but his shrunken legs moved nimbly. But Ar swept down to the Trojans, helmet flashing, and pacing him went Phoebus with long hair streaming and Artemis showering arrows, Leto and River Xanthus and goddess Aphrodite strong with eternal laughter. Now, while the gods had still kept clear of mortal men, the Achaeans kept on gaining glory great Achilles who held back from the brutal fighting so long had just come blazing forth. Chilling tremors shook the Trojans' knees, down to the last man, terrified at the sight, the headlong runner coming, gleaming in all his gear, a fire-like man destroying ours. But once the Olympians merged with mortal fighters, strife the mighty driver of armies rose in strength and Athena bellowed her stunning war cry standing now at the edge of the deep dug trench outside the rampart, now at thundering cliffs she loosed her vibrant cry. And Ars bellowed his cry from far across the lines, churning black as a whirlwind, roaring down now from the city's crest, commanding Trojans on and now rushing along the Simois banks and scaling Sunlight Hill. So the blissful gods were rousing both opposing armies, clashing front to front but then, in their own ranks, their overpowering strife broke out in massive war. Down from the high skies the father of men and gods let loose tremendous thunder from down below Poseidon shook the boundless earth and towering heads of mountains. The whole world quaked, the slopes of Ida with all her springs and all her peaks and the walls of Troy and all Achaea's ships. And terror struck in the underworld, Hades lord of the dead cringed and sprang from his throne and screamed shrill, fearing the god who rocks the ground above his realm, giant Poseidon, would burst the earth wide open now and lay bare to mortal men and immortal gods at last the houses of the dead the dank, mouldering horrors that fill the deathless gods themselves with loathing. So immense the clash as the war of gods erupted. There, look, rearing against the lord Poseidon Phoebus Apollo loomed, bristling winged arrows, rearing against ours, blazing eyed Athena, rearing against Hera, Artemis with arrow of gold. And cry that halus the hunt, the goddess reigning shafts, huntress sister of Phoebus the distant deadly archer rearing against Leto, Hermes the running god of luck and against the fire god rose the great deep swirling river immortals call the Xanthus, mankind call Scamander. So god went up against god. But blazing Achilles strained to engage Prince Hector, plunge in battle with him beyond all others Achilles yearning now to glut with Hector's blood, his, no other, ours who hacks at men behind his rawhide shield. But Aeneas it was whom Phoebus, urger of armies, filled with power now and drove against Achilles. Phoebus, masking his voice like Priam's son Lycane, like him to the life the son of Zeus called out, Captain of Trojan councils where have they gone, those threats you made in your cups before the kings? Boasting you'd face Achilles man to man in battle. 
But Aeneas turned and gave the god an answer, son of Priam, why press me to go against Achilles? It's much against my will his fury is overwhelming. Nor would it be the first time I have had to face the matchless, headlong runner. Once before he chased me hard with his spear, down from Ida the day he raided our flocks and sacked Lernessus, Pedasus fought as well. But Zeus saved me then, put force in my heart, spring in my racing knees. Else I'd gone down at Achilles' hands, Athena's too the goddess sweeping before him lent the light of safety, calling Achilles on that day with his bronze spear to slaughter Leliges and Trojans. That is why no mortal can fight Achilles head to head, at every foray one of the gods goes with him, beating back his death. Even without that power his spear flies straight to the mark, never stops, not till it bores clean through some fighter's flesh. But if only Zeus would stretch the ropes of war dead even the man would have no easy victory then, believe me not though he claims his built of solid bronze. Apollo son of Zeus encouraged him still more, hero, why not invoke the deathless gods yourself? They say you're a son of Aphrodite, Zeus's daughter, but Achilles sprang from a lesser goddess loins Aphrodite's a child of Zeus, that he's comes from the old man of the sea. So ram him straight on with your tough bronze. Now and not for a moment let him turn you back with his stinging proud contempt and brazen threats. That breathed enormous strength in the good captain right through the front he went, helmed in flashing bronze. Nor did the white-armed Hera fail to see Anchise's son advancing there through the press to face Achilles. And rallying other gods around her, Hera shouted, Bend to the work, you too, Poseidon, Athena, decide in your hearts how this assault will go. Here comes Aeneas, look, helmed in flashing bronze to oppose Achilles now and Phoebus speeds him on. Come, spin him round in his tracks and drive him back. That, or else one of us might stand beside Achilles and lend him winning force his courage must not flag. Let him know his love by the greatest gods on high while the gods who up till now have shielded Troy from war and death are worthless as the wind. We swept down from Olympus, all to join this fight so Achilles might not fall at Trojan hands today. Afterward he must suffer what the fate spun out on the doomed fighter's lifeline drawn that day his mother gave him birth. If Achilles fails to learn all this from our own immortal voices he will quail when a god attacks him face to face. The gods are hard to handle when they come blazing forth in their true power. But the god who grips the earth restrained the queen, Hera, so hard, so senseless. Don't leap to extremes. I, at least, have no real lust to drive our forces against the gods of Troy. Our side is so much stronger. Come now, let us move off and settle down together far from the trampled field, take a lookout post and leave the war to mortals. But if ours or Phoebus cares to start things off, if they block Achilles and keep him out of action, they will have a fight on their hands, then and there, an all-out fight with us. But not for long, I trust they will soon break off and slink back to Olympus, home to the gathered gods who wait their coming, overwhelmed by the crushing power of our fists. And with that threat the god of the sea blue manair led the way to the fortress raised for godlike Heracles, earth piled on both sides, a high imposing breastwork men of Troy and Pallas Athena flung up for the man where he could race and escape that sea monster whenever it charged him hard from shore to plain. There Poseidon sat at ease with his deathless friends who spread unbroken shrouds of mist around their shoulders, while far on the other side the gods of Troy sat down on the brows of Sunlight Hill, flanking you, Apollo, god of the wild cry, and our scourge of cities. So either side of the lines they took positions, weighing tactics, each Olympian force reluctant now to launch out first on the wrenching horrors of war, while Zeus on the heights sat poised to thunder orders. But the whole plain filled with men and flashed with bronze, with troops and horse and beneath their feet the earth quaked as armies rushed together. And now in the no man's land two champions, greatest of all, strode and closed, both men burning for battle, Aeneas son of Anchises and brilliant Achilles. Aeneas came up first with long, menacing strides, head tossing his heavy helmet, his charging shield thrust out to defend his chest, and shook his bronze spear. But over against him came Achilles rearing like some lion out on a rampage, and a whole town of men has geared for the hunt to cut him down, but at first he lopes along, all contempt, till one of the fast young hunters spears him then, crouched for attack, his jaws gaping, over his teeth the foam breaks out, Deep in his chest the brave heart groans, he lashes his ribs, his flanks and hips with his tail, he whips himself into fighting fury, eyes glaring, hurls himself head on kill one of the men or die, go down himself at the first lethal charge. So now magnificent pride and fury lashed Achilles to go against Aeneas the great-hearted fighter. 
As they closed on each other, both in range, the matchless runner Achilles opened up, Aeneas why so far from your own ranks, standing all exposed. Does your courage really drive you to challenge me? In hopes of ruling your stallion-breaking friends and filling Priam's throne? Even if you killed me, would Priam drop his crown in your hands for that? The king has sons. His sound of limb. No half-wit either. Or have the Trojans sworn to carve you a fine estate? The choicest land in the realm, rich in vineyards and good tilled fields for you to lord it over if only you kill me. Ah but I think you'll find the work quite taxing. I seem to remember once before you fled my spear. Or have you forgot the time I caught you all alone, I cut you off from your flocks and sent you scurrying down the slopes of Ida? Running for dear life, legs driving, never a look behind. And you escaped that time, you fled to Lernessus' walls, but at one charge I sacked the place with Athena's help and Father Zeus, I tore the day of freedom away from all the women, dragged them off as slaves. Zeus saved you then and other gods joined in. But he won't save you now, I'd say though the hope goes racing through your mind. Go back to your own rank and file, I tell you don't stand up against me or you will meet your death. Even a fool learns something once it hits him. But Aeneas, taking a long, deep breath, replied, Don't think for a moment, Achilles, son of Peleus, you can frighten me with words like a child, a fool I'm an old hand myself at trading taunts and insults. We both know each other's birth, each other's parents, we've heard their far-flung fame on the lips of mortal men, though you have never set eyes on mine, or I on yours. They say you are Peleus' son, that fine, flawless man, your mother, the tease, sleek-haired child of the sea. And I am Aeneas, and I can boast Anchises' blood, the proud Anchises, but my mother is Aphrodite. Our parents one pair or the other will mourn a dear son today. Certain it is, I warn you, we won't break off from battle and leave the field with no more than a youngster's banter light as this. But about my birth, if you'd like to learn it well, first to last though many people know it here's my story, Achilles. Starting with Dardanus, Storm King Zeus's son who founded Dardania, long before Holy Troy arose, that city reared on the plain to shelter all our people. They still camped on the slopes of Ida wet with springs. Then Dardanus had a son in turn, King Erichthonius, and he was the richest man in all the world three thousand mares he owned, grazing the marshes, brood mares in their prime, proud of their leaping foals. And the north wind, lusting once for the herd at pasture, taking on the build of a black stallion, mounted several and swelling under his force they bore him twelve colts. And when they'd frisk on the tilled fields ripe with grain they'd brush the crests of the corn and never snap a stalk, but when they'd frisk and vault on the sea's broad back they'd skim the crests of whitecaps glistening foam. Now Erichthonia sired Troes, a lord of the Trojans, and Troes, in turn, had three distinguished sons, Ilus, Asaracus and Ganymede radiant as a god, and he was the handsomest mortal man on earth and so the immortals, awestruck by his beauty, snatched him away to bear the cup of Zeus and pour out wine for all the deathless gods. And Ilus, in turn, sired a valiant son Laomedon, Laomedon had his sons as well, Tithonus and Priam, Lampus and Clitius, Heiste on the gallant aid of ours. And Asaracus fathered Capis, and he had a son Anchises and Anchises fathered me, but Priam had Prince Hector. There you have my lineage. That is the blood I claim, my royal birth. As for strength in war, Zeus lends power to some, others he wastes away, whatever his pleasure the strongest god of all. Come, Achilles, no more bragging on this way like boys, standing here in the thick of a pitched battle. Plenty of insults we could fling against each other, enough to sink a ship with a hundred benches. A man's tongue is a glib and twisty thing, plenty of words there are, all kinds at its command with all the room in the world for talk to range and stray. And the sort you use is just the sort you'll hear. What do we need with wrangling, hurling insults? Cursing each other here like a pair of nagging women boiling over with petty, heartsick squabbles, blustering into the streets to pelt themselves with slander, much of it true, much not. Anger stirs up lies. I blaze for battle your taunts can't turn me back, not till we've fought it out with bronze. On with it taste the bite of each other's brazen spears. With that he hurled a heavy lance at the great and awesome shield and its massive surface clanged as it took the point. Achilles had thrust it forth with his strong fist, fearing staunch Aeneas' spear with its long shadow would drive its whole length lightly through his buckler groundless fears. The fighter had no idea at all that famous gifts of the gods do not break lightly, can't be crushed when a mortal hand assails them. 
So now not even seasoned Enia's heavy shaft could smash Achilles' shield, the gold blocked it, forged in the god's gift. It did bore through two plies but three were left, since the crippled smith had made it five plies thick with two of bronze on the outside, inside two of tin, between them one of gold where the ashen spear held fast. Achilles next he hurled his spear and its long shadow flew and the weapon struck the balanced round shield of Aeneas under the outer rim where the bronze ran thinnest, backed by the thinnest bull's hide. Straight through the Pelian ash burst, the shield rang out with a screech but Aeneas crouched low, holding the buckler off his chest, terrified as the shaft shot past his back, hurled so hard it plunged deep in the ground, even after it tore up two round plies of the shield that cased his body. Dodging the big spear, Aeneas got to his feet, a dizzying swirl of anguish rushing down his eyes, blind with fear, the point had stuck so close. But drawing his sharp sword, Achilles charged, wild, hurtling toward him, loosing a savage cry as Aeneas hefted a boulder in his hands, a tremendous feat no two men could hoist it, weak as men are now, but all on his own he raised it high with ease. Then and there he'd have struck Achilles lunging in, the rock would have hit him square in cask or shield, the gear would have warded off grim death, and Achilles, closing, would have slashed his life away with a well-honed blade if the god of earthquakes had not marked it quickly and called the gods at once who grouped around him, now, I tell you, my heart aches for great Aeneas. He'll go down to the house of death this instant, overwhelmed by Achilles all because he trusted the distant deadly archer's urgings. Poor fool as if Apollo would lift a hand to save him now from death, grim death. Aeneas the innocent. Why should Aeneas suffer here, for no good reason, embroiled in the quarrels of others, not his own? He always gave us gifts to warm our hearts, gifts for the gods who rule the vaulting skies. So come, let us rescue him from death ourselves, for fear the son of Cronus might just tower in rage if Achilles kills this man. He is destined to survive. Yes, so the generation of Dardanus will not perish, obliterated without an heir, without a trace, Dardanus, dearest to Zeus of all the sons that mortal women brought to birth for father. Now he has come to hate the generation of Priam, and now Aeneas will rule the men of Troy in power his son sons and the sons born in future years. But Hera the queen broke in, her eyes open wide, decide in your own mind, god of the earthquake, whether to save Aeneas now or let him die, crushed by Achilles, for all his fighting heart. But time and again we too have sworn our oaths in the eyes of all the gods I and Pallas Athena never to drive the fatal day away from the Trojans, not even when all Troy bums in the ramping flames when the warring sons of Achaea burn her down. As soon as he heard that, the god of earthquakes surged through the clashing troops and raining spears to reach the place where the two famed heroes fought. Quickly he poured a mist across Achilles' eyes, wrenched the spear from stalwart Aeneas' shield, laid the bronze-shod ashen shaft at Achilles' feet and hoisting Aeneas off the earth he slung him far. And over the massing lines of men and massing chariots, high in the air Aeneas vaulted, hurled by the god's hand till he came to ground at the battle's churning flank where Corconian units braced themselves for action. The god of the earthquake swept beside him there and gave the man a burst of winging orders, Aeneas what god on high commands you to play the madman? Fighting against. Achilles' overwhelming fury. Both a better soldier and more loved by the gods. Pull back at once, whenever you're thrown against him or go down to the house of death against the will of fate. But once Achilles has met his death, his certain doom, take courage then, go fight on the front lines then no other Achaean can bring you down in war. With that, with destiny made clear, he left him there on the spot and turning back to Achilles quickly brushed away the mist from his eyes, the magic, God sent haze. And Achilles stared with all his might, dazzled, disgusted too, and addressed his own great heart, impossible look, a marvel right before my eyes. That spear I hurled is lying here on the ground. That man I cannot see him the one I hurled at, wild to cut him down. Ah, so the deathless gods must love Aeneas too and I thought his vaunts were empty, hollow boasting. Underscore well let him go, I say. Never, never again will he have the nerve to test my fighting power even now he was glad to save himself from death. Now, quick, I'll marshal our battle-hungry Argives face the rest of the Trojans, test them, fight them down. And back to the lines he leapt and urged each man, no more standing back from the Trojans, brave Achaeans. Now fighter go against fighter, out for bloodshed. It's hard for me, strong as I am, single-handed to make for such a force and fight them all. Why, not even ask the deathless god of war, not even Athena for all their heavy labor could hack a passage through such jaws of battle. 
but I whatever fists and feet and strength can do, that I will do, I swear, not hang back, not one inch. Straight through enemy columns I go plowing now and no Trojan, I guarantee, will thrill with pleasure once he meets my spears half head to head. Spurring his men while Hector a flash in armor urged his Trojans thinking he'd even go up against Achilles. No fear of Pelides now, my gallant Trojans. I too could battle the deathless gods with words it's hard with a spear, the gods are so much stronger. Not even Achilles can bring off all his boasts, some he'll accomplish, some cut short, half done. I'm off to engage the man, though his fists are fire, though his fists are fire and his fury burnished iron. Spurring them on to raise their spears for full assault and the Trojans fury massed and mounted, war cries broke but Apollo suddenly stood by Hector, shouting, don't for a moment duel Achilles, Hector, out in front of your ranks. Withdraw to your main lines and wait him there, out of the crash of battle. Else he'll spear you down or close for the kill and hack you with his sword. So Hector drew back to his thronging comrades, terrified to hear the voice of God. Not Achilles armoured in battle power down he flung on the Trojans, loosed barbaric cries, and his first kill was Iphition, a Trintius hardy son and a chief of large contingents, born of a river nymph to a Trintius, scourge of towns, below Tmola snows in the wealthy realm of Hyde. As the Trojan charged head on Achilles speared him square in the brows his whole skull split in half and down he crashed, Achilles exulting over him, here you lie, a Trintius son most terrible man alive. Here's your deathbed. Far from your birthplace, Jige Lake where your father's fine estate lies next to the hill stocked with fish and next to the whirling Hermus. Vaunting over the dark that swept his quarry's eyes and the running rims of Argive war cars cut him to shreds at the onset's breaking edge. And next Achilles lunged at Demoleon, son of Antinor, a tough defensive fighter he stabbed his temple and cleft his helmet's cheekpiece. None of the bronze plate could hold it boring through the metal and skull the bronze spearpoint pounded, Demoleon's brain splattered all inside his cask, the Trojan beaten down in his fury. Hippodama's next, he leapt from his chariot fleeing before Achilles Achilles spears half rammed him through the back and he gasped his life away, bellowing like some bull that chokes and grunts when the young boys drag him round the lord of Hellas shrine and the earthquake god delights to see them dragging so he bellowed now and the man's proud spirit left his bones behind. Achilles rushed with his spear at noble Polydorus son of Priam. His father would not let him fight, ever, he was the youngest bomb of all his sons Priam loved him most, the fastest runner of all but now the young fool, mad to display his speed, went dashing along the front to meet his death. Just as he shot past the matchless runner Achilles speared him square in the back where his war belt clasped, golden buckles clinching both halves of his breastplate straight on through went the point and out the navel, down on his knees he dropped screaming shrill as the world went black before him clutched his bowels to his body, hunched and sank. But Hector seeing his own brother Polydorus clutching his entrails, sinking limp to the ground the mist came swirling down his eyes as well. He could bear no more, wheeling off at a distance shaking his wetted spear he charged Achilles now, coming fierce as fire but Achilles marked him quickly and springing forth to take him, triumph to himself, here is the man who's raked my heart the most, who killed my cherished comrade. No more delay, dodging each other down the passageways of battle. Under his brows he glared at royal Hector, shouting, quick, charge me the sooner to meet your death. But Hector, his helmet flashing, never flinched, don't think for a moment, Achilles, son of Peleus, you can frighten me with words like a child, a fool I'm an old hand myself at trading taunts and insults. Well I know you are brave, and I am far weaker. True but all lies in the lap of the great gods. Weaker I am, but I still might take your life with one hurl of a spear my weapon can cut too, long before now its point has found its mark. Grim reminder he brandished the shaft and hurled with all his might but Athena blew it back from Achilles bent on glory a quick light breath and the shaft flew back again to tall Prince Hector and fell before his feet. Achilles blazed, charging, raging to cut him down, loosing savage cries but Phoebus whisked him away, easy work for a god, and wrapped him round in mist. Three times the brilliant runner Achilles charged him, lunged with his bronze spear, three times he slashed at cloud then at Achilles' fourth assault like something superhuman his terrifying voice burst out in winging words, now, again, you've escaped your death, you dog, but a good close brush with death it was, I'd sail now, again, your Phoebus Apollo pulls you through, the one you pray to, wading into our storm of spears. We'll fight again I'll finish you off next time if one of the gods will only urge me on as well but now I'll go for the others, anyone I can catch. 
Whirling he stabbed Dryops, speared him right through the neck he dropped at his feet and Achilles left him dead and smashed Demutius' knee, Philetus strapping son, stopped him, right in his tracks with a well-flung spear then sprang with his great sword and ripped his life away. Then on he rushed at the sons of Bias Laogonus, Dardanus hurled them off their chariot, slammed them both to ground, one with a spear thrust, one chopped down with a blade. Then Tros, Alastor's son, crawled to Achilles' knees and clutched them, hoping he'd spare him, let Tros off alive, no cutting him down in blood, he'd pity Tros, a man of his own age the young fool, he'd no idea, thinking Achilles could be swayed. Here was a man not sweet at heart, not kind, no, he was raging, wild as Tros grasped his knees, desperate, begging, Achilles slit open his liver, the liver spurted loose, gushing with dark blood, drenched his lap and the night swirled down his eyes as his life breath slipped away. And Mulius next he reared and jammed his lance through the man's ear so the lance came jutting out through the other ear, bronze point glinting. Echiclus son of Agenor next Achilles split his head at the brow with hilt sword so the whole blade ran hot with blood, and red death came plunging down his eyes, and the strong force of fate. Deucalion next he lanced his arm with a bronze shod spear, he spitted the Trojan through where the elbow tendons grip and there he stood, waiting Achilles, arm dangling heavy, staring death in the face and Achilles chopped his neck and his sword sent head and helmet flying off together and marrow bubbling up from the clean cut neck bone. Down he went, his corpse full length on the ground just as Achilles charged at Pyra's handsome son, Rigmus who'd sailed from the fertile soil of Thrace Achilles pierced his belly, the bronze impaled his guts and out of his car he pitched as his driver Aretha swung the horses round but Achilles speared his back and the spears half heaved him off the chariot too and the panicked stallions bolted. Achilles now like inhuman fire raging on through the mountain gorges splintered dry, setting ablaze big stands of timber, the wind swirling the huge fireball left and right chaos of fire Achilles storming on with brandished spear like a frenzied god of battle trampling all he killed and the earth ran black with blood. Thundering on, on like oxen broad in the brow some field hand yokes to crush white barley heaped on a well-laid threshing floor and the grain is husked out fast by the bellowing oxen's hoof so as the great Achilles rampaged on, his sharp-hoofed stallions trampled shields and corpses, axle under his chariot splashed with blood, blood on the handrail sweeping round the car, sprays of blood shooting up from the stallion's hoofs and churning, whirling rims and the son of Peleus charioteering on. To seize his glory, bloody filth splattering both strong arms, Achilles' invincible arms. 